this video will discuss some practical aspects of potentiometry and how it is used. So I've redrawn the beaker uh, from last time here. So the main use of potentiometry is if you want to figure out the concentration or uh, yeah, the, basically the concentration of whatever analyte is in your solution. So the main setup is we have this voltmeter. So that reads off the cell potential between two half reactions. One half reaction is at the, is at the reference electrode. Uh, this could be a number of things. I'll talk about some common reference electrodes that are used. So this is one half reaction. The other half reaction occurs at this indicator electrode, which is what's interfacing with the analyte. So this potential at the indicator electrode gives us E indicator. And this is the potential we're interested in. So we want to know what E end is. And this will give us, then, the concentration of the analyte. So we don't know this. We can measure the cell potential. This comes from the voltmeter. And then we also know the reference electrode potential. That's given. And so I'll talk about what a few examples of what these are. And so if we know this, so we know this reference electrode. We can measure E cell. And we can either ignore the junction potential or uh, minimize it. And then so from this, we can then calculate the indicator potential and then get out the concentration we want. So first, for reference electrodes, reference electrodes, I've said before that the standard hydrogen electrode is not readily used because it's hard to uh, deal with hydrogen gas. So as a result, often we want something that's you know easily transportable. We can like give it a sealed tube, just stick it in, and then just use it directly. So one really common one is a standard calomel electrode. Standard calomel. Oops, can't spell. Calomel electrode. And this uses mercury chloride. So if we start off with mercurous chloride, add two electrons, and then this will be in some sort of equilibrium with liquid mercury and chloride ions. And then, so this has a known potential. This is, oops. So this half reaction's potential is at, excuse me, oh, 0 0.227 volts versus SHE. So if we have this half reaction, we'll be measuring it against the indicator electrode potential. So we could later reference it to SHE by doing just a simple subtraction. If we do this in cell notation, then what we'll have is we'll have uh, mercury, often some sort of paste. So it'll be liquid mercury paste with this solid mercury chloride. So some sort of paste, overall the same phase. And this will be kind of like one long rod that goes down. And then this is then interfacing with saturated potassium chloride. So again, we have a phase boundary because potassium chloride is aqueous. So this is in solid phase. This is aqueous. So this is our left side electrode for the reference electrode. And then we'll have our salt bridge. And then we'll do whatever analyte's going on here. And then indicator electrode, et cetera, et cetera. So this side is our reference that we care about. Another common standard electrode, or reference electrode rather, is silver silver chloride. So I'll just write over here uh, silver silver chloride electrode. And then this potential, or this half reaction, is if we take salt silver chloride, add an electron, and then this goes to silver metal, and then chloride ion. And then this potential is 0 0.22 volts versus SHE. Oh, that cut off. This is versus SHE. Um, so the way these uh, uh, electrodes work is often what you'll have is some sort of glass tube, just like I've drawn over here. And then so for the silver, silver chloride electrode, we'll have this silver wire. So this will be some sort of sealed tube. Here's my silver wire. And here, again, we have some sort of frit. And often, you'll actually seal these on the ends of your own glass tubes with like heat shrink tubing, for example. And then within this solution, here's my KCL. 
in, in water. Um, usually it's one molar or something like that. And then over time, what will happen is your silver chloride will kind of build up. So you can make a layer of silver chloride on the outer surface of your silver electrode. And then so in here is, this, is, is our half reaction, silver chloride going to silver uh, and back and forth at this potential. And then so when it's in communication through this salt bridge, you know, potassium chloride diffusing through this frit, those ions can just travel readily into the rest of our speaker. Then we have our half reaction that we can then communicate with our indicator analyte and then do our measurement there. So these are our electrodes. The standard Calvin electrode is manufactured in a very similar way where you have a mercury, mercury chloride mixture over here in potassium chloride solution. And thus we have our half reactions at known potentials. Okay, so that's our reference electrode. Um, for the indicator electrodes, we can talk about that. So this is the one that really matters. And the indicator electrode, what it is, will depend on what you're trying to measure. So the so-called first class indicator electrode, so first class, or you might see it called the first kind. Um, if you have some sort of metal, so if your indicator electrode is made of a metal, then it will be a good way to measure the concentration of metal plus or metal N plus ions in solution. So in this case, your analyte has got to be the metal ion. And then so this half reaction would be this one plus N electrons goes to some metal. So this will be this will be your indicator electrode. Oops. And then so we know what this potential should be under standard conditions. So we know that E naught, um, so we know this E naught. And then so basically, if we have a beaker filled with some sort of metal ions, OK, and then here's my reference, so ref and voltmeter. So this will be our metal, metal, and then in the solution will be metal N plus. If we want to know the concentration of these metal ions within this beaker of analyte, we can use the Nernst equation. So this will be, uh, if we know E naught, we can then measure the cell potential, subtract out the reference electrode potential, and we should be able to find that E indicator, this indicator potential that we got from this equation, is going to be equal to our E naught. And in this case, this will be minus RT over NF. So again, N is the number of electrons that are being passed. And then this will be the natural log. In this case, it's going to be products over reactants. So it's going to be the activity of the solid electrode, which is 1, over the concentration of the metal ion. So basically, if we know this, we know this, all you need to do is measure the indicator electrode potential by doing this calculation, and then we can find out, solve for the concentration of metal ions. So in practice, uh, unfortunately, sometimes you get side reactions between the metal electrode and other ions in solution. So I have a list of, of when you can use this type of behavior. Um, so let's see. This is most useful for if you want to measure silver ion concentrations in solution, you could do, use a silver electrode. Um, you could also do this for mercury. Mercury ions, these are under neutral conditions. You might ask, if mercury is a liquid, how can you use it, make an electrode out of it? There is a way called a uh, hanging drop mercury electrode. So you have a drop of mercury just dangling at the end of your electrode, and you have a conductive wire that connects to it. And thus, we can use mercury as an electrode. And then this is also this first class indicator electrode is also useful for, let's see, copper, copper 2 plus, zinc, zinc 2 plus, um, do, 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 cadmium, cadmium 2 plus. There's a number of other ones, and these apparently are under air free conditions, under, let's say, nit nitrogen. So this is the so called first class electrode where your metal electrode is participating and it's the same as whatever you're trying to measure, uh, or the same element at least, um, to give you the final ion concentration. 
So let's say you wanted to measure, you know, cadmium in solution. Cadmium is toxic in some sort of water, let's say Lake Michigan. You could use an indicator electrode to do that. So it would be a really powerful way to do it. And a relatively easy measurement, right? You just need to have a voltmeter and this setup. And just, you can just dip it in without having to do some crazy titration. OK. Um, so other types of indicator electrodes. I'll erase this part. We'll leave this up here. Um, so there's so-called the so-called second class, second class, which I won't write out. And then this one, we second. Okay, we'll use uh, our metal electrode form some sort of insoluble precipitate with with some sort of ion that we're detecting. Insoluble precipitate. So one example would be silver chloride and silver. So if we have, again, the same reaction, silver chloride plus an electron will give us silver metal. So this is also a solid. And chloride ions. And then this has a known potential, which I believe is 0 0.22 volts versus SHE. So now we can. Uh, determine the concentration of chloride ions in solution. So if we have, again, if our indicator electrode is now made of silver, like a silver wire, we can then figure out chloride concentration because we should know that our indicator potential is going to be equal to this E naught, this 0.22, minus RT over NF log. In this case, chloride is in the product. So it's going to be chloride concentration. Solid activity is 1. This solid activity is 1. So we'll have chloride concentration. Um, in practicality, you might often see this in a different format. So if we say we're at 25 degrees Celsius, we can just directly substitute T in for 25 degrees Celsius, or 298 Kelvin. And we know what N is. N equals 1. And then we know R and F. So then we could just say that indicator potential is 0 0.22 minus 0 0.0592 log base 10 of chloride concentration. And then so this also equals the negative log of something of a concentration is like let's say pH is negative log hydronium ion concentration. So this, you might see this as 0 0.22 plus uh, 0 0.0592 P chloride. And so that's our metal electrode with the uh, forming the insoluble precipitate for the second class indicator electrode. Um, the final type, which would be rather than having the metal and so the indicator electrode here in both of these cases is directly participating in a reaction with whatever we're analyzing. So this one, you know, they're exchanging, and in this one we're forming some sort of precipitate. Uh, there are also, you can use inert electrodes. We talked before about platinum and gold electrodes. And they can directly probe potential for a different redox couple that's it, where they're not reacting as well. So we can also do potentiometry with inert electrodes like platinum or graphite or gold. And the concept is the same. It always goes back to the Nernst equation. So if you can apply the Nernst equation, you can do anything. 